let's go to the beginning, which is the types of content that align you with what people are purchasing. Because the truth is not all blog posts are going to be valuable to you as a business owner. An example would be a random blog post about cat videos. Let's say you've compiled a bunch of funny cat videos. People who find that blog post, they might enjoy it, but what are they actually going to purchase? And the answer is probably nothing. But people are purchasing two things very, very commonly right now. Number one, physical products. The user behavior of most Americans and, and most of the Western world right now is shifting online even more due to kind of global issues that are going on. So not only have we already been buying online, we're buying more stuff online and we need help figuring out which one is right for me. And then the second thing that people are willing to invest in already is transformation and transformation. It's a big word. It sounds like a big thing. And obviously someone who loses 300 pounds, that's a transformation, but transformation can also be smaller and more specific. Like I want to be able to beat my friends at the game of golf and a golfer who goes from not being able to beat their friends to being able to beat their friends at a round of golf, that is a transformation. And we can get even more specific, right? How to hit the drive straight off the tee or how to serve at tennis or how to return a serve at tennis. So transformation doesn't have to be these really large grandiose things, but people are willing to invest in transformation. So we're going to jump on the computer and get started. And the first thing I got to remind you is that if you haven't started your blog yet, if you're not in motion, if you're not publishing, then nothing's going to happen. So I need you to actually start your blog and every post you write following this template, both templates and more it's practice. If you haven't started your blog, you can always go to milesbeckler.com. And on the very top, there's a post that says, start your blog. This is a 100% free tutorial. And I go through step by step by step by step on how to get your blog started, right? So it'll get picked up by Google early. We're also going to talk about building an email list and right here next to it, start your email list. I show a 100% free landing page tool and a 100% free email software. And again, step-by-step -step how to set it all up. That will be relevant as we talk a little bit more about the transformation level. So the first place I want to go, let's talk about transformation. Let's talk about really, how do you map out this transformation? The blog post type here, the template is a how to post and don't let the simplicity of the how to post idea. Think that it's something small and insignificant. How to posts mean that you are a teacher, you are an educator. And when you actually teach people through a how to piece of content, how to do something, they are so interested in learning more from you. The example, okay. If you are actually teaching people ping pong and you're teaching them how to serve at ping pong and their serve absolutely stinks and they read your blog post and they go do what you told them. They take the drills and they actually do the things you told them and their server gets better. Guess who they start to trust as their trusted advisor in the world of ping pong. It's you. So what does that mean? They're more willing to read your other content and they're more willing to get on your email list. And this is where having a great lead magnet, like a five day challenge, right? A five day challenge to up your ping pong game, a five day challenge to improve your tennis serve these types of lead magnets that drip them one drill, one step, one tutorial a day, every day for five days, will get them on your email list. And you've probably heard before that the money is in the list, which it is at the end of that. You can sell one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You can sell courses. You can recommend specific paddles and rackets and blades and tools and techniques, etc. You could sell other people's courses as an affiliate. Okay. Are you seeing how the how to post leads to your opt in that leads to your email list and that leads to the sale? This is how you build the biggest asset. So what do you make your content on? How do you structure a great how to post? So we're going to go to Udemy right now. Now Udemy is a course, uh, creation world. It's a, it's a platform where course sellers can sell their courses. And I don't think real quick, we never copy people's content. Plagiarism is bad and wrong, but we are able to go look at the structure that they're using to understand the structure that would work for us to help our people get transformation because that's what these courses are selling is transformation. So up top, I'm going to search tennis to get us started. Right. And the idea here is that I teach tennis. I'm a tennis pro or I played tennis and I'm, I'm helping others up their game. And here we see the number one result that comes up is Andre Agassi. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, this guy knows how to play tennis. So I'm going to click and I'm going to look at the structure of his course. Okay. Because his course is teaching people how to play tennis better. When you scroll down below what they already bought, you can see the course content and it's broken up in modules and lectures. And you can see that I can toggle the introduction open and close. So what am I looking at here? Well, 
I can see that Andre decided, this professional tennis player decided in his world that it's important for people to know how to do a forehand, a backhand, a serve, a return of serve, a volley, etc., etc., etc. But how does he teach them? Well, now I can go look at what's important under each one. So if I was crafting a how-to post on how to hit a better forehand shot, okay, that's the transformation I'm helping them get with my free blog post. I would want to make sure I overview it. I'd want to make sure I talk about the grip, this 12 inch rule. I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing that's placement on the course. So I know I need to have a placement on the court, uh, component within that the take back. Okay. So that's a motion, the follow through. So we're talking about the swing itself, the tennis ball is a clock. So somehow looking at the ball, eyeballing the ball and how to deal with the pace, the speed at which the game is coming at you. Guess what? If I write a blog post, that's 100% purely my content, right? I'm not going to buy this course. I'm not even going to look at what's in this from him. I don't even care. I'm looking at the structure of it because the structure of this course, it's been purchased by 16,000 people. And of the 16,000 people, 4,000 people said that this is a 4.5 star, which means that of the 16,000 people, four and a half thousand people, 25% got such a good transformation that they came back and rated it very, very, very positively, which means the structure of the content worked. Therefore, if I apply this structure with what I know about tennis from all my years of playing tennis and coaching tennis and being tennis, but I use the structure that's already proven, my blog post is going to have impact and my blog post is going to work for the people. So this is a great way to essentially outline the different posts. And again, we'll talk about how to write them at the end. I'm give, we're working on the structure and the foundational outline ideas first. The second place we can go is to Amazon Kindle bestsellers. Okay. So I'm on amazon.com and you just go to the Kindle store. Um, and then you click on Kindle eBooks. If you need, you could just type in Kindle eBooks into the search and you want to get here, which is the best sellers in Kindle eBooks. Now you can obviously go down uh, category by category to find the different categories that you're in. If you want, you just kind of keep clicking through and you'll find it, or you can just search from within the Kindle store. So one thing I'm going to search is, um, how to start a photography business. Okay. And it auto populates, which tells me there's people searching this. And now I'm just looking at what ranks and what has high reviews. It's the same theory, the same thesis that we had before, uh, one, two, three launch, how to start a photography business when you have no money, no time and no energy. Perfect. I'm a professional photographer. I've taught friends to do it. And now I've got a blog that's teaching photography and photography business and all of that. This is where I want to look. And then you can click on the book cover. You see how it says, look inside. If it doesn't say look inside, you can't look inside, but when it does, you just click on it. And what I'm looking at here is the table of contents. Okay. So here it is. So he's got three phases, dream it, plan it, do it. Okay. So you could replace this with ready, aim, fire is essentially the three ways. And then under dream it, which is readying it. Uh, what do you want? So goal setting, um, plan would be how to get it. What can stop you looking out for common mistakes and then planning it, uh, the right gear. So the gear could probably be broken down, right? Camera lighting lenses, uh, et cetera, et cetera, studio backdrops, et cetera. Um, develop your talent. So like how to actually build the skills as a photographer to be marketable as a professional. Um, building your portfolio and setting it like, like this is the structure. Okay. So I've literally just found the structure. And again, uh, like it's never cool to plagiarize. It's in fact, illegal to plagiarize, but looking at and borrowing the structure of what's already working just makes sense, right? We're just allowing their research to help. I'm going to go plug in. I'm going to improve on this. I'm not going to just go mirror this. I'm going to say, okay, that's a great starting point for me to work off of. I'm going to build a really rough basic outline off of this possibly in like workflowy or in just Microsoft word or Google docs. And then from there, I'm going to go just add to it. I'm going to improve upon it and I'm going to make it mine, improve upon it and make it yours. That is the absolute key. Uh, so really on, on the Amazon side of things, looking through the bestsellers is key. Uh, one of the, a couple of things you want to look at is good review ratings. Okay. This one has no one star ratings at all, and it's got five stars and you want things that rank relatively high, uh, because when they rank relatively high, that means Amazon has data that says that it's a good user experience. And obviously you would go through more than one of these, right? We would look at other ones, um, to really make sure we've got all of the bits and pieces covered in our ultimate guide to starting a photography post. And if someone lands on your ultimate guide to start a photography post, and here's their table of contents. Um, if someone lands on this post and they read through it and they're like, man, this was great. And you have an opt-in box at the bottom that are the seven tips to becoming profitable in 30 days or the seven day kickstart your photography business challenge. And they opt in for that. They're now on your list. And at that point you can recommend gear as an affiliate. You can recommend courses as an affiliate. You could sell one-on-one -on -one coaching to them. 
you could sell them a membership. There's a lot of places you could go once they convert to your list. And the fact that you're willing to give great, helpful information that people are obviously purchasing, you give that away for free. It's structured wonderfully. They go through it. They have their aha moment. They see you as the trusted advisor. Bingo. Now they're ready to take that step in your direction, which is not buying from you. It is obtaining more information. It is that first step that you want them to take is getting on your email list. And this is how you grow the email list with the how to posts that covers it for template number one. Now, as we go to template number two, remember that I'm using one different tool for each of these templates. You would obviously use all three of the tools for all three of them as, as mix and match. Okay. I'm doing this for efficiency sake. So I don't think one tool is right for one template and one tool is right for the other template. This is kind of a mix and match scenario. Now, the next tool we're going to talk about is Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is brilliant because Pinterest is a decision platform. When people are planning, when people are thinking about doing something in, whether it's uh, remodeling their kitchen or whether it's making new recipes at home or whether it's learning, knitting, crafting, crocheting, et cetera, putting on new, they go to Pinterest to essentially find inspiration and to find which one to purchase, which brings us to template number two, which is the best blank for blank. Now we all think we are unique in this world. So what people might be looking for in the world of golf would be the best driver for left-handed people, the best driver for short guys, the best driver for 50 year old women, because the 50 year old woman believes that there's a right one for her. There's a physical product in the world that she's passionate about that is going to give her a competitive advantage. She just doesn't know which one it is. And she doesn't necessarily go to Amazon immediately to go buy it because she doesn't know which one she wants. Where does she go to find what she wants to buy? Pinterest is one of the locations, obviously Google as well, which is why we're going to build this out as a post that's going to be optimized for Google, which you're going to learn again at the end, how to optimize these types of posts for Google. But what we're also going to do is create pins and we're going to market it on Pinterest because Pinterest is going to tell us exactly what's working. So the best blank for blank. Now, if you know what you're after, okay, uh, best driver for 55 year old women, great. Just type that in and see what comes up. And you can just make sure that the auto populate, uh, auto complete matches, which we'll do in a second. Uh, but if you don't know what the best blank for blank is, this tool can actually seed you. And we're going to leverage the auto complete. And we're also going to leverage the little bubbles that come up behind below it. Um, you'll, you'll see more of these bubbles here in a second. You'll get what I'm saying. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's do, um, best crochet. So let's say we're in the crochet world. So best crochet, and it automatically tells me what people look for. Okay. So it's best crochet patterns, hair hooks, stitches for blanket, dishcloth pattern, hair. So I'm seeing patterns for bulky yarn. So I'm going to go into hooks. Hooks are the actual things that I think that are used for crochet. I'm not much of a crocheter. I'm just using a random example here. So I'm going to say best crochet. Now I'm going to type in hooks and I'm going to put four and I now see seeded by what's already been searched by 380 million Pinterest users who spend 80% more than most other social people, right? This is a planning platform. Remember that that's the key to the research on this platform. Um, best pro crochet hooks. There's two types. I would absolutely make sure that I have a blog post for both of these best crochet hooks for beginners, best crochet hooks for arthritis. And guess what else I would have? how to post that aligns with this. Are you seeing how these work together? So from here, I can just literally go into best crochet hooks for beginners. And when I'm saying bubbles, you'll see on a future one that some bubbles pop up below. And that means there's another sub level deep, but on this we're there. We just, we get it. This is the best crochet hooks for beginners. This is the long tail keyword phrase I would target. And then obviously I would be able to go work and find the other ones Our for, for arthritis would be the other ones there. So let's do, um, best golf since I've used that a couple of times. So best golf clubs, courses, irons, gifts for him. So it, it populates a best blank for blank for us. Okay. The best golf gifts for him. The fact that it's auto populating that right off that to me makes it sound like I really want to make sure I have that post, but what we're going to go into here is best golf irons. And I'm gonna type in four and I'm gonna put blank. Okay. So 20, 2019, which means that my, if I was going to do a best golf irons post, I would make it a four 2020 post another place. Obviously you want to cross reference. And I didn't count this as a, um, I didn't count this as one because Google I've, I've taught use Google, use Google, use Google. So I'm just going to type in best golf irons four. And now I see some auto population here as well. So don't limit yourself to, to just Pinterest, right? We're just looking at what people are queuing up to purchase. Um, now let's go for best golf. Let's do another one here. So best golf clubs. 
Actually, let me just search best golf and see if we get any uh, bubbles coming up. I'm going to show you the bubbles real quick. Because this is another way to navigate. Okay, they didn't show up on that. So let's do um, uh, toaster oven. Let's say you have a kitchen blog and you want to do um, content for your kitchen blog and you want to promote toaster ovens because they're a $300 product, which would have a good commission for you. Well, here we go. Best toaster oven countertops, oven recipes. So let's do this, see if we get the bubbles. So now you see how we got these bubbles down below? What these mean is it's just another way of them saying these are commonly searched things on the Pinterest platform. And this is really what Pinterest um, uses. YouTube is starting to test this kind of a thing to, to work with your home feed. Google is kind of starting to test this as well because all of the platforms want to help people find what they're actually looking for. So best toaster oven for 2020, best toaster oven for RV, best toaster oven for countertops. These are the types of posts I would make on that. And obviously if you're doing, um, best mixers, right. For a mixing bowl, you could look at for best mixers, etc. Um, strollers, best strollers for twins. It automatically pops up for Disney world with car seat. So I could type in four and there it is. It's actually seeding me. What are the most common things looked for, for travel, for toddlers, for twins. Um, if I just search best strollers, let's see if we get the bubbles on this one. And this is the game. So we get the bubbles again. So best strollers for travel, best stroller car seat combo. I mean, there's all of these sub ideas, all of those niche specific posts that these are people wanting to buy something and they're looking for help from an independent creator like you, like me, like people in the niche who are already dominating and all that's going on here. You're like, well, it's already done. There's already people got, yeah, that just means they have a head start on you. And that means you need to start, which is going all the way back to milesbeckler.com and start your blog. If you haven't started your blog yet, nothing's going to happen. But eventually if you publish two, three blog posts per week that are absolutely fantastic for your people. And if you're pinning multiple pins to each one every single week to really get the word out on this Pinterest platform, platform, you could find a Pinterest user who's searching for what you just wrote a blog post about tomorrow. And that could start driving relevant targeted traffic from someone who is planning on purchasing on a platform that has known buyers, they might land on your website. And that is how you craft content that can ultimately bring cash flow in. And I'm just going to type in dog leash because obviously dog leashes are a world we could go into. So, um, Let's do best dog leash because I want to make sure when people are searching the word best, they're definitely looking for the right one for me. And then the four is for my unique situation. Okay. So I'm a runner and I want a dog leash. Okay. So the user behavior, I am a specific, I'm a runner. I embody this identity as someone who runs and I need a leash that is designed for me. Best dog leash for runners for training. I'm training my dog. I need a leash for training, uh, for walking and for pulling. So here it is. It automatically populates there. And then if I put a space, here, it's going to show us the different ones here. And obviously you can do this on Amazon as well. And that's it. Those are the different post types. Now, how do you actually uh, write these out? So I've got two posts that go really deep into the process of taking the data points. Okay. We just did research and you'll, you'll be able to pull your data points of what's going to go into it. The, whether it's the outline structure, the headings, the subheadings, the main points, etc. These two posts, if you go to right here in YouTube, search miles Beckler, write content fast, write affiliate content fast. So how to write SEO optimized affiliate review posts fast. This template here is for the best blank for blank. And then the, how to create SEO content fast is for the how to template. They're a little tiny bit different. I have one for each of them. And again, just uh, miles Beckler, write content, miles Beckler, how to write content. All of the search will, will pull it up. Um, and if you haven't seen my affiliate marketing, if you like that idea of being really direct to sale, helping people make the right choices, that's the whole methodology I talk about here in the affiliate marketing in 2020. And that's it. And this is totally beginner friendly. All it takes is a willingness to dig in, do the research, to really plan out transformation, to really plan out a path to help them get what they're looking looking for. And then following those two other videos, which will pop up on the end screen here, you're able to go in and actually craft that content. And you'll find that you can put a blog post together. That's fantastic. It's well optimized. Google's going to love it. Your readers are going to love it in a few hours. And if you get really good at this and it might take you a few days to get started and that's okay. If you get really good, you can get it done in an hour and a half. And that 
is some power because then you can start to make some pins. And then with those pins, you can start to drive traffic to your blog post fast while Google is still picking you up and indexing you. You just got the keys to the castle. This is, it sounds simple and it is simple. The difficult part is showing up and doing the work day in, day out, week in, week out, hundreds of times over 500, 700 times. That's what the content creators and bloggers who are making really good lifestyle income are doing. If you have questions, get at me in the comments below. I'm happy to help. Give me a thumbs up if you've made it to the end. 100 in the uh, comments if you did make it to the end. And be sure to check out the actual next videos that will show you exactly how to map them out, write them, we get on, and we actually click the keys and put the letters on the paper so you can learn how to get these content posted to your website fast. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to helping you from here. And until uh, we meet again, be well.